Okay, what do you see now? Same thing. When you say same thing, what is it? Uh, it's it's not in not in presentation mode. Okay. We see all the slides on the side. On the side. All right. Stand by. On the bottom right-hand corner, see the screen? Try yeah, I hitting, see that. Try hitting that one. I'm hitting it now. All right. Do you still see the um, No, that's, the still notes? that's still in presentation. I, I see the notes. You see the yeah. notes, okay. So share. Okay, now what do you see? There you go. That's it. Uh, everybody, my apologies. Okay. Uh, this is uh, unit one of the CFM review course, Floodplain 101. We've done introductions. Today's schedule will cover floods and floodplain management, National Flood Insurance Program, the NFIP flood studies and maps, changes to the NFIP studies and maps, the NFIP floodplain management requirements, additional regulatory measures, ordinance administration, substantial improvement and substantial damage, flood insurance and floodplain management, and disaster operations and hazard mitigation. What is the purpose of the CSL, uh, CFM? The primary goal of the ASFPM Certified Floodplain Manager Program is to help reduce the nation's flood losses and protect and enhance the natural resources and functions of its floodplains by improving the knowledge and abilities of floodplain managers in the United States. The program also recognizes the professionalism of floodplain management activities and provides a process to keep abreast of changes in regulations and legislation, the NFIP, and advances in floodplain management through continuing education. Why should you care? Flooding is by far the most costly natural disaster. In 2019, flood, floods caused approximately $3.75 billion in property and crop damage loss in the United States. In 2017, the losses were approximately $60.7 billion. More importantly, floods are swift, powerful, cold, and deadly. During the 2013 floods, eight people were killed in Colorado. 144 people were killed during the 1976 Big Thompson Canyon flood, and 28 people died in the 1965 South Platte flood. What are floodplains? Floodplains are areas of low-lying ground, typically adjacent, adjacent to a river or coast, which is subject to flooding. Floods and human development continue, continuously alter the landscape. These changes can increase flood risk, may impact water quality and quantity, and can affect natural habitat for species. Floodplains are not always depicted on flood insurance rate maps. What is a flood? A flood is a general and temporary condition of partial or complete inundation of two or more acres of normally dry land or of two or more properties from overflow of inland or tidal waters, from unusual and rapid accumulation of runoff of surface waters, and or from mud flow. Development in the floodplain and watershed. Development alters the floodplain and the dynamics of flooding. It can decrease conveyance. It can decrease the floodplain's ability to store water. It can also increase flood water velocity and decrease infiltration.
terminology, common types of flooding. In Colorado, riverine flooding is the most common. Riverine flooding is when excessive water, whether through extended rainfall, snow melt, et cetera, causes a river to exceed its capacity. This can result in overbank flooding, which is when water rises over the channel's edges, or flash flooding, which is an intense high velocity torrent of water that occurs in an existing river channel. Less likely in Colorado is coastal and lake flooding. This is caused during storm surge or high winds. Tsunamis are even uh, rarer in Colorado. This is a long high sea wave. Shallow flooding is also possible. Shallow flooding is the average, uh, is a flooding event with an average depth of three feet or less where there is no defined channel. Special flood hazards. Closed basins, which are watersheds which do not drain to the sea. An example of this would be Crater Lake in Oregon. Alluvial fans, these are cone-shaped geologic features where silt, gravel, and sand is deposited by water flow. Dam breaks. Ice jams, this is when ice clumps together to block the flow of a waterway. This is very common in uh, some of our mountain towns such as Silverton. And then there's mud flow, which is a river of liquid and flowing mud on the surface of normally dry land as when earth is carried by a current of water. These are some acronyms that we'll, you'll hear throughout the webinar. BFE, this is the base flood elevation. FHBM, the flood hazard boundary map. This is the precursor to the next one, which is the FIRM, the flood insurance rate map. The FIS, the flood insurance study. The NFIP, the National Flood Insurance Program. SFHA, the special flood hazard area. This is the regulatory area for floodplain uh, development management. LM, LOMC or LOMAC, these are letters of map changes which include the LOMA or LOMA, the Letter of Map Amendment, the LOMR, LOMER, Letter of Map Revision, the LOMER F, Letter of Map Revision based on fill, and the CLOMER, the Conditional Letter of Map Revision. As certified floodplain managers, one of our most important jobs is educating communities to the dangers of flooding. An adult can be knocked down by as little as six inches of fast moving flood water. And automobiles can be carried away in as little as 12 inches of rushing water. Additionally, the need for proper floodplain management is part of our uh, purview as certified floodplain management. Why are communities at risk from flooding? In the past, most cities developed next to creeks and rivers. Also, growth near waterways continues to encroach into floodplains. Concerns and trends of floodways. Flood losses continue to increase nationally. Floodplain encroachments continue to occur, also at an increasing rate. Nationally, approximately 30% of all flood damage claims occur outside the 100-year floodplain. And human-made flood control improvements and structures are vulnerable to extreme flooding events that exceed design capabilities. Costs for structural mitigation outpace available funds and government can't continue to sustain funding flood recovery and structural mitigation costs. It's important that people be held accountable for pr protecting themselves and preventing adverse flood impacts. There is a national trend to recognize and preserve the natural and beneficial functions of floodplains. Some examples of Colorado flood events. Some of the biggest in 1910, the Cherry Creek in Denver, Two deaths, $161 million, all the way up through 2013 with the uh, uh, northern and central Colorado flooding. The damages were $7 billion with eight people lost. Since 1900, the average 
annual flood losses in Colorado is over $50 million and over 300 lives have been lost. This slide shows some contacts for floodplain management. I don't think you have to write these down. Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, these slides will be made, uh, made available to those attendees. Is that correct? Yes, they have already been made available. And if you have any problems uh, downloading them, just uh, let me know. Thank you, Chris. And some web, uh, websites that are also helpful with information. We're going to move on to unit two. Hopefully I can get that to work. One moment, please. Um, 